from the Alex Trebek stage at Sony Picture Studios, this is Inside Jeopardy. Welcome to a special edition of Inside Jeopardy. I'm Sarah Foss, joined by executive producer Michael Davies and the newly crowned Jeopardy Masters champion, James Holtzauer. Wow, how's it feeling? Um, you know, Sarah, I knew coming in this was going to be an incredibly high level of competition, but even I was blown away by the great performances out there, um, especially Matei in the final. Uh, you know, I told them I have played against Ken, I played against Amy, I played against all-time greats. I've never felt as on the ropes as Matei made me feel. And uh, for, for them to put up the performance uh, that they did when, you know, with all that's on Matea's mind right now, is just an incredible achievement. What makes Matea such a unique competitor? in jeopardy i i mean i i don't know what it is about their buzzer mojo but i just you know there were times when i just could not get in in that second half uh and that's something you're not used to yeah yeah it's a, not a feeling i get very often yeah heading into final jeopardy twice you were not in the lead that's not a a common place for us to find you james no it's uh it gives you a feeling you know and there was a, a real kind of bit of poker in the uh the wagering in the second half and you know i I don't know Matea that well. I don't know if they're going to zig when I zag. It's I kind of bet small, hope for a really difficult final that we both miss and hope that they bet big. One big question for us at Jeopardy was what should be the level of the material? How should we set the material for six such elite players? Did anything surprise you about the material? I, you know, I tried my best to prepare, but honestly, you, you never know what's going to come up there. And a lot of the things I, that you threw out there, I was expecting triple rhyme time before, <laughs> during and after. But that doesn't help you prepare for it. And it was, I think, as hard as anything I've seen on the show, including the greatest of all time. I think many people wondered, you know, they hadn't seen you since 2020. What's James been doing in his off time? Would he come back just as good? We know you've been involved with the chase, but feels like you've been in training mode ever since you left the Alex Trebek stage the last time. I think the thing I'm better at really is making good TV. You know, something about being in, involved in a TV production, you learn what's what's can people tune in to watch. And I think I kind of like the idea of playing this villainous character, you know, that's the, the big bad that everyone has to take down. And, well, you know, they, they really stepped up, I'll <laughs> say that. You know, I think often great television comes from two opposing ideas colliding. And I think the one thing I've learned, having never produced you before, is that the two ideas that collide there are you playing the role of a game show villain and actually the secret getting out that you're really <laughs> such a lovely guy in real life. And those two opposing ideas create this magic that is great television. You're playing amazingly. I'm so proud of you. Well, do we have to keep talking about that? I'm sure there's all kinds of things I could have been interviewed about. <laughs> Well, we've talked about the camaraderie among the six of you. Obviously, we've alluded to a lot has happened in this competition. I remember when we first got the call that Andrew's wife was in labor, and you were the, one of the first ones who said, they can't make you tape, Andrew. They need to shut down all of the taping. And I think anyone who thinks of you as a real game show villain would say, no, let's play, even if, it, even if Andrew has to leave. But you really do put your fellow contestants ahead of winning when it really comes down to it. Or I wanted to make sure he'd be on no sleep when he came back. Ah, yeah. see, there's the truth. I think another relationship that we wondered how it would evolve after Ken may have defeated you in GOAT <laughs> was that between you and Ken now as the host. I think the banter between the two of you was one of my favorite things that came away from this Masters Don't competition. Don't you have another impartial host you could have chosen for this, perhaps? Well, <laughs> we could have, but the two of you were hilarious. I think we made great television. What's it like to know James Holtzauer, Ken? <laughs> well, it's in the form of a question, but it's not correct. I would say these 30-minute interactions we have are the perfect amount of time to know you, James. Yeah, <laughs> talk about two different styles. You know, Ken, Ken and I are very different people, but we both uh, have kind of have the same killer instinct on the, the Jeopardy stage. Yeah, let's talk about the final itself. The final was a, a very different game uh, for you. You know, we got used to the all-in daily doubles. I think the semifinals, you were perfect uh, in your daily doubles. And then the finals, suddenly, for the first time in a very long time, those daily doubles didn't go your way. Yeah, I have to say I was lucky both times. I had no points going in. I lost a thousand, and that was it. And I was able to <laughs> pick myself up. And you know, if those had been timed differently, uh, who knows? Now, in that second game in the final, when Ken revealed you were incorrect and he's heading to Matea, what was going through your mind? How much math were you doing? What were you thinking that maybe they had wagered in that moment? Yeah, so I had two choices. I could bet everything, uh, hope I get it right, Matea gets it wrong, or Matea bets small. 
I can wager small and hope that it's really hard and Matea gets it wrong and, and bet big. And, you know, I, I went back and forth in my mind. Honestly, like in poker, sometimes the right move is to flip a coin and uh, randomize your strategy like that. But I, I don't know. I think it, it's kind of lucky that uh, Matea went that way and especially lucky that there was a killer final that none of us knew. We know what you expect to come up and sometimes you, you throw a real curveball at us, but we do our best. Now, coming into this competition, a lot of people said, oh, it's a, a TOC rematch, and you throw James Holtzauer in there. Uh, you know, you hadn't played against any of these five. What do you think, walking away from it? Yeah, I mean, this could have gone a lot of ways. I, if I didn't have my buzzer mojo going, I could have easily been out uh, before the, the semifinals. That, you know, I, when I found my way back into that stage, somehow it clicked, and everything was going real smooth until primetime Matea showed up at the end there. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I didn't really know what to expect coming out. I knew everyone was going to be great. There were no easy outs in the lineup ever. So just I had to go in there, play my best, and hope that was good enough. Your biggest daily double in this whole Masters competition, 25,600 points. You did it with ease. You just said, ah, oh, yeah, 25,600. Did you even wince in that moment? Uh, no. That's, <laughs> the, you, you, you can't uh, let things get you or else, uh, you know, you're thrown off your game. And they, guess what? They still keep playing. <laughs> they don't wait for you. To quote Sam Buttrey, bring it. You brought it every time there was a daily double. Yeah, very true. Um, I'm interested. I mean, I'm going to start the process now that will happen over the next few months uh, before we move into, um, you know, planning uh, Masters, your return to defend uh, the trophy uh, next year. But this was new for all of us, building a new format, building a new point system, um, a new elimination format. Um, how do you feel about the nature of the competition? I think it's interesting. Uh, you kind of came stuck a, an interesting balance between the English style of oh, let's, let's let them play a regular season and that's that's good enough. And hey, we Americans like a playoff. Well, let's, yeah. let's toss a playoff in there. Yeah. No, believe me, had it been just up for me, we just would have been a league with a winner at the end. Jeopardy's a sport. Yeah, I, don't I think know. you still would have. I think you still would have won that. It might have, it um, might have gone okay. Yeah, for me. yeah. We have to. Uh, I think we have to thank the network ABC for inspiring us uh, to uh, build a proper uh, playoff system and our own Rocky Schmidt, who who came up with the semi-final idea. So uh, that was all there. But yeah, we're going to go back and look at it um, and uh, think about how we can improve. Masters for next year, perhaps increase the prize money, increase the charitable donation, um, and uh, perhaps make a few more episodes. Well, you mentioned the charitable donation. Obviously, Project 150, Jeopardy will be donating in their honor, a charity very close to you. What will another, you know, 100,000 do for that charity. Yeah, I, uh, I want to say of the, of the great feelings I have right now, number one is definitely cracking an egg over Ken's head. <laughs> But number two is that I was able to do this for the charity. I know uh, this is kind of a sticking point for me and my wife. We've really been angling for years for the Chase to do a charity episode. And you guys stepped up and uh, you, you tossed this donation in. And it's going to mean so much to uh, these people. They're going to be able to provide some scholarships and some, uh, some food and some clothing to people who badly need it. And you revealed on the show um, that part of the success and part of what the charity gets is the extra publicity that has led people to start that charity or to make efforts to, to, to build that charity in new cities as well. Yeah, it's an uh, amazing cause. I would love to see this spring up in other cities. It'd be an amazing thing. Melissa likes to say that we're, we're sending ripples of good into the world and, you know, we don't see where the ripples go, but they're, they're out there. Well, you have a year now to think about the next Jeopardy! Masters. What does one do with that time? Knowing what you know now, at least about two of the competitors you're going to face next year, Matea will be back, and so will Matt Amodio. I'm not going to look at any trivia stuff for a long time, <laughs> to be honest with you, but when I, when I do, I will know that uh, I need to be loaded for bear. <laughs> James, congratulations. Thank you so much. Um, you, <laughs> great television. Our first ever Jeopardy! Masters champion, James Holtzauer. Yeah.